Hey there, welcome to CKLU 96.7. This is another hour of Creator Conversations. I'm your host, Jess, from OurCreator.com. You can check uh, check us out at OurCreator.com as well. You can subscribe to Our Creator on all your social feeds, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter to make sure that you're up to date on all sorts of content that we're posting throughout the week um, and so you know what's going on in your community. Uh, So this week we have a special guest on. Isn't every guest special, though? Uh, We have this week Tracy Baker. So you might recognize her name uh, from Makers North. So they are an organization, uh, her and her partner, Julianne Steedman. uh, They've been working for the last couple of years building this amazing community of artisan makers in our area. Um, Now, if you've never been to one of the Makers North events, oh boy, get yourself ready. There's one coming up November 20th. 24th, 25th. We're going to get more details on that in a minute. Um, But these events are jam-packed, and it's crazy to think that so many people in our community are making such cool products. Um, So definitely something to check out. I know I'll be there that weekend doing a bunch of my Christmas shopping, uh, getting all that out of the way before the rush really starts. Um, But let's talk more with Tracy here. We're going to get a little bit more backstory on how they got started with with all this Makers North craziness and uh, where we're going with it. We are back for another edition of Creator Conversations. This time we are talking with Tracy Baker, one of the minds behind Makers North. Um, So Tracy, can you get us started by telling us a little bit about Makers North and how it got started? Oh man, it got started in 2016. Julianne and I are always joking about this because it started in the typical way that we start everything and she'll kill me for saying it because we're trying to stop saying it, but it's by complaining. (laughs) We're always getting together and complaining. We didn't know each other yet, but her and I looked at each other from across the distance at a particular market event where there wasn't, there were no shoppers at the whole event and we're watching all the vendors and everyone's just kind of hanging out. We're like, you know what? I think we can do this. And there's so much talent here that just needs that extra push to connect with the community. So we were thinking, yeah, let's just give it a go. Could we do this? Yeah. Um, So in your own words, why would you say that it's important for makers to have a community to kind of gather around? Makers together? Yeah. Oh my gosh, for support. For support. We are in this together. I don't know if a lot of people realize how intense and challenging it is to be a handmade artisan in today's society, in any society really. It's It takes a lot out of you, it takes all of your time. It's a full-time job on top of what other full-time job they most definitely have, or the part-time job, or the children, or there's so many things on the go, and then they have this passion to the side, and the late nights and everything that comes along with it. So mm-hmm. having other people in that same boat is comforting. <clears throat> Yeah, to definitely. To that, like, understand yes. the hustle. The hustle, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Absolutely. So now, not only Makers North, obviously, you're mostly known largely for the markets you guys host, but you guys also work on coordinating other opportunities for makers to mm-hmm. improve their skills or improve networking and that kind of thing um, and their displays. So mm-hmm. can you talk to us more about that? Yeah, we're working... Slow and steady, we have um, a bunch of different workshops that are in progress. Um, The one that we like the most is Headshots and Hellos, because it's hard to talk about yourself. As a maker, as a person in general, it's hard to just say, this is what I do, with confidence. So in this workshop, we like to teach people how to write a great bio, and how to stand behind it, and have that confidence that you need to just say, I make bows, for example. I make bows, children's products, They're premium, they're high quality, they're handmade, and they're very proud of it. Instead of saying, well, like, like, I don't know, sometimes I like make some, like I make a bow or like something. It's no big deal. It's not a big deal. It's just like, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, like having confidence to say proudly what they do. Yeah. And then get an amazing photographer to shoot a great headshot as well. Photography is so important. Photography. Definitely. So important. Super under, <laughs> underrated, I underrated. feel. Underrated. Natural yeah. light. That's all yes. I have to say. So talk to us about the upcoming holiday market. So it's coming up later in the month in November. Yes. 24th, 25th, 
holiday market extravaganza, Christmas shopping, get it done all that weekend, and then don't think about it again. Just come get it done. Yeah. That's all. We have stuff for everybody. There's kid stuff. There's stuff for dudes, stuff for ladies, stuff for people everywhere in between those two categories. <laughs> Anything you possibly want. It's going to be great. We have a total overnight flip. So... It's 99% people from Northern Ontario. The number of people that applied this year was insane. I felt very painful for the jury. Very glad we didn't have to do it because there's a lot of good stuff in there. Tough to pick, right? It's going to be nuts. Man. And lots of good food. Food is where it's at. Come hungry. Yes. Come hungry. Tuco's Tacos is coming with their truck. Really? Yeah. I'm going to stuff my face. That's exciting. I'm stoked. Um, so talk to us about some of the makers that you're super excited for people to check out over the market. There are so many. No favoritism <laughs> oh at all God. here. <laughs> there's a there's a, okay, there's one coming. This is an out of town one. They're called Stiffies and Stilettos. Just think about that for a minute. Mm-hmm, Stiffies mm-hmm. and stilettos. I'm, stilettos. I'm sinking it in. All right. It's amazing. It's like body products, but it's kind of on the sexy side too. I'm super excited about that one. Um, we have a couple new people coming from North Bay. A few new people coming from a bit further out. Um, I can't think of the names right now. There's someone coming from Manitoulin Island, and I'm totally forgetting her name right now, but she makes these gorgeous, actual plush stuffies that look like something you'd buy in a store that are these fantastical creatures. Oh, my God. So cute. If I could, Stardust Gremlin is her name. Stardust Gremlin. I'm pretty sure she's from Manitoulin Island. These stuffies are insane. And me and Julianne, I'm like, Julianne, I need... I need all of these stuffies. <laughs> I'm like the child out of our pair. <laughs> They're gorgeous. So Man, cool. that sounds mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. Nice. Yeah. All right, so this is obviously our holiday market. Mm-hmm. Um, so what kind of tips do you have for folks that might come shopping, thinking that they're going to cross a few people off of their list? Come early, because it's going to be bananas. So you want to make sure everyone has a lot of stock. And get your elbows out. Because there's going to be a lot of people there. <laughs> and that's it. Come early, elbows out. But there are there are people that will suit pretty much everyone on the list. I mean, there's um, Manitoulin Crate Co. who comes from Manitoulin. He makes these incredible leather belts, perfect for all the, like, grandpas and the dads and, you know, the moms, too. <laughs> Anyone that needs a belt, everybody. Everyone who wears pants. All the pants wearing people. Oh. All of us. So great for dudes. Um, lots of great stuff for mom. Wolf and Pine will be there with their super sassy products as normal. Tons of visual artists. Oh, and we've got um, two visual artist features that will be working on some work in progress stuff. So you could come and take a peek behind the scenes oh, as nice. well. So let's compare the beginning of Makers North. So I think I went to the very first market at the Ukrainian yes. Center, right? Cool, yeah. Um, so very different space. Now we're taking over the very whole different. McCune School. So talk to us about, yeah. you know, com- starting the beginning and comparing it to now. Like, did you have any concept of where it was going to go? No idea. Had no idea. The first market, Julianne and I didn't even know if anyone was going to come. And we were frantically inside, setting up, decorating, getting all those last minute things done like crazy. And my sister was working the door and she was saying, you need to come and look outside. And we were like, what's wrong? Like, is nobody here? This is insane. And we got outside and there was this enormous lineup and we're like oh my god why are so many people here this is like what are we even doing you know we didn't even think about capacity at that market we're like like, is it too late to cancel yeah like can we run can we just run out the back door but it that one it worked out really well we're really surprised i think it was the whole swag bag thing i don't know if that was really done here like in a on a grand scale yet and some of the people things people give for swag bag is nicer than my actual products. Like it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty intense. And now I think I feel like we're in our sophomore year, <laughs> where we're, we're getting better. I mean, we've streamlined the process a lot more. The space is so beautiful, and we've been able to figure out exactly how many people we can fit, so we can have a huge range of folks from anything you could need, right? So it's really nice to see this community building up people Mm. connecting you know the makers are connecting with the people that want handmade goods especially today we've got so much commercial stuff out there garbage products that are made single use just gets tossed 
And so many of these handmade people are finally connecting with the audience that wants their well-made quality stuff mm-hmm. instead. It's really nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really great to see all the people like out supporting mm-hmm. supporting their community really and supporting yeah. makers in there. Keeping commerce in the north. Mm-hmm. Like we it's made here. Most of the supplies are all found here. It's mo- like most of our makers use sustainable uh, products and are really interested in that kind of go green movement which we support and love entirely. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to see everyone getting together and shopping local and then spending all their money downtown at all the awesome restaurants we have. Yes. Go downtown. So what is your advice for some makers that are maybe get just getting started mm-hmm. um, to really fill out their application for the next Makers North Market? I said it before and I'll say it again. It's all about photography, having bright, clean photos uh, so the jury knows what you're making. You want them to look at that photo and see your product and think, beautiful, I can see that in my house or I could see myself using that. Or, you know, something like that. It's just like a beautiful photo is key, key, key. Um, Having some sort of social media presence is really important because if your photos aren't that great and you're still learning how to take great photos, they will go and look at your photos and what you have online and stuff. So getting all of those kind of key things in place can be really important. A nice description and try and work on your branding. It seemed, it's very easy to just say, well, I I knit this kind of hat and I'm just going to sell my knit hats. But at the end of the day, your product could be amazing. You need to wrap it in that beautiful package that is branding and have a name for your business, even if it's just your own name, and put together some kind of beautiful packaging that's mm-hmm. going to sell your hat versus someone else's hat. Yeah. Yeah. Good tips. And work your butt off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned a few times jury. So mm. is it a jury that selects what makers are going to be participating in the market? Yeah. So we're really inspired by um, it's a friend of ours now. Her name's Emily, and she runs a shop called Cheerfully Made in Ottawa. And I had a friend crush on her for way too long. <laughs> we finally went and did one of her markets last weekend, and it was amazing. Um, we kind of were inspired by her whole process. So she'll get all of her applications in, and then she'll go through the list and remove any of the ones that aren't quite appropriate maybe people who aren't quite there yet, but maybe they'll be there next year, you know, kind of take those people out. And then the rest of that whole list goes off to the jury members. um, And then they go through and pick everybody. And then at the end of the day, Julianne and I get our whole list of accepted people back and we figure out who's going to be, this is our first two day market. So we figured out who's going to be on two days on which day, because we didn't know we'd get this many applications. We couldn't believe it. We had enough to do a total overnight flip. So we figure out who's on what day and then send out 12,000 emails, which is a slight exaggeration. Only slight. You know, just slight. (laughs) Only slight, though. Right? (laughs) Yeah, so we send all that out and hope for the best. Wow. Yeah. This market's intense. Yeah. This this is going to be one for the books, I guess, eh? I think so. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. So we are eagerly anticipating the Makers North holiday market uh, coming up November 24th, 25th. Um, In the meantime, where can listeners find more information about Makers North and upcoming events? Typically, our website is the safest bet. It's makersnorthcollective.com. And also our Facebook and social media information. Like um, Instagram is a good spot where you're going to get sneak peeks of everyone's behind-the-scenes process. If you check out the hashtag Makers North, hashtag Makers North, um, almost all of the makers are sharing what they're working on, their swag bag submissions. So... Just get on the internet and do some stalking. All right, Tracy, we're going to cut to some music here, and then we will be back shortly to talk more. Thanks. Hey, we're back in the studio here at CKLU 96.7 for Creator Conversations. This hour, we have been talking with Tracy Baker from Makers North, getting some of the details on the holiday market that's coming up. That is November 24th, 25th at the McEwen School of Architecture downtown. So you can definitely check that out. There's going to be lots of fun stuff to check out for sure. Uh, Tuco's is going to be there. There will be other, uh, I'm sure there will be other delightful treats there for you to sample. And of course so many different artists and vendors for you to choose from. So there's actually going to be this time, uh, for the first time, a complete flip. So the vendors that you see on Saturday will not be the same vendors you see on Sunday. So you've got to go both days to check out everything. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely, definitely something that you want to check out. There's going to be lots of cool stuff. Um, and you might even be lucky enough to get some of your Christmas shopping done ahead of time, if you're lucky. 
Um, so we're going to cut into some music here. Uh, we're going to do uh, two songs, actually, by Classified. Uh, he's performing uh, tomorrow night at the Crusoe Club. So something you should check out if you're looking for something to, to do in the middle of the week here. Um, so we're going to play two songs. So She Ain't Got she ain't Got to Do Much and Three Foot Tall. We'll be back in shortly. Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. Hey there, welcome back to CKLU 96.7. Uh, we are here this hour with Creator Conversations. Uh, we just wrapped up our first sex- uh, chunk of music here, so we had She Ain't Gotta Do Much and Three Foot Tall, both by Classified. You can catch Classified performing tomorrow night, that's November 14th, at the Crusoe Club. So if you are, uh, if you're interested, I, I, there might be still tickets available, you better go rush and check. Um, so you you can catch that tomorrow. Uh, doors open at 7 o'clock um, if you're interested in that show at all. Um, this hour we've been talking with Tracy Baker. So in our first half we talked a lot about Makers North and some of the things you can expect to see at the holiday market that's coming up in a few weekends. So that is November 24th, 25th at the McEwen School of Architecture downtown. We've got lots of updates about uh, the holiday market for this year um, and some of the things that they've been working on, but what's perhaps a little more interesting is to find out about the people behind the organization. So we are going to be talking with the next half here uh, with Tracy about some of her experience. Um, she is also a teacher at Cambrian, so we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, teaching new designers and young people coming up um, and where exactly she got her artistic knack. So let's listen in here and uh, learn a little more. We are back for the second half of our interview here for Creator Conversations. So, Tracy, I want to know all about you. Mm. So, give us a bit of a rundown on your background and how it led you to leading a collaborative makers. Do you want my whole history? I went to, like, Pius the Twelfth Elementary School. <laughs> <laughs> and then St. Charles, because I want to be just like my brother. Just kidding. Um, I So I grew up, I, I always tell everyone this, I grew up in this house with a mom who had no attention span for crafts. She changed her mind every week. We made like Mod Podge one week. The next week we were making these weird spinny wind catchers out of little plastic sheets. Or what is another? Oh my God. We just made so many strange things, right? So I always had these, this range of kind of creative interest that she always encouraged me to do while making jokes about me being the smart kid who had to like support her when she was old so I was like she's like do art and stuff but like a backup you, you should have like a backup yeah, yeah. Like, yeah on top of your medical career on top of my medical career I'm also gonna be a famous painter so anyway when I decided to be a paramedic she was like yeah that sounds good and and eventually taking like one week of sciences and it was like hard no drop directly out of that take two years off, meet some friends who were into art and design and all that stuff, and then go back to school at Cambrian uh, for the visual arts program back in the day and just kind of continued from there. Mm. And, yeah, it was good. So were you always kind of somebody that enjoyed making things? And yeah, like, yeah, totally. Oh, I was just talking about this the other day. In high school and in grade school, I was kind of known as, you know, an artsy person or a creative person or whatever. I was always drawing But there hit a point in high school, grade 10 and on, I drew nothing but the guys from Lincoln Park constantly. (laughs) And I found some recently. I was like, wow, these are actually pretty good. So it was either Chester Bennington or Brandon from Incubus or whatever. And I hate admitting that Lincoln Park was my jam first thing. But it it led me to Weezer. And then it led me to other good music. Other and things. Sorry, Lincoln Park fans. You know, I was one step closer to the edge. <laughs> but I got through it. 
<laughs> so I moved on from drawing boys constantly on everything um, to other drawings, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> yeah, you buried yeah. your skill set. Buried my skill set, and now I draw occasionally other things. But I've kept that tradition alive, actually. I've been trying every Valentine's Day with my now husband to draw him a more and more graphic Valentine every year. Okay. And so, you know, it's last year I didn't get one done, uh, but this year, Josh, it's you better look out. I, I've already started working one. on it. Yeah, it's <laughs> happening. It's gonna. Your mom's not going to want to see it. I, There's I that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about your romance. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to let that one go for his sake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on top of being a maker, running this whole Makers North collaborative, uh, you're also a teacher at Cambrian. Um, so being a designer yourself, how do you find the balance between teaching and doing? Actually, I feel like since I started teaching, I've learned a lot more about exactly what I enjoy doing. Because if you don't enjoy teaching something, you're definitely not going to enjoy doing it. So there are a few things that I've kind of weeded out that I don't want to do anymore. But that's fine. And working with students, when they're excited, is it's it's an energy like I, you've got to tap into. Because when they're excited and you're excited and you're really working well with a student or a, a group of students or whatever, it it really motivates you to work harder because you want to learn more things and get better for the, their learning sake, right? You just want to share what you have with their fresh, young, spongy minds. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It's fun. Teaching Teaching is a whole beast unto itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so talk to us a little bit more about, you know, working with this new kind of generation of artists. Mm. Um, obviously, you have the course content, but what things are you kind of hoping that they'll take from you and apply to their futures you're allowed to suck at stuff like a lot I was I mean I look back my friend Tanil and I are always joking about how in our early 20s we would have exhibits and take part in art and whatever and on our phones and stuff we'd always like have our art ready to show people when we were like out at the bar because you know people cared about your art when you're out having fun come on now but you know we were so proud of what we were doing back then and that you look back and it's really terrible right and now it's you know some somewhat better hopefully but in the moment you don't really know you're terrible at it so you get better it's all about working and keeping working and being proud and sharing it even though it might not quite be there yet, uh, I think it's important to share the work, Mm. even if it sucks. That was like a weird rambly circle, but I think it makes sense. Like, be proud of where you're at and know that you're working towards getting better, as long as you're working. Because if you're just sitting there, not working, Mm -hmm. you're not going anywhere. Yeah. That's all. Like, (laughs) <laughs> giving yourself like the grace to try new things and yes. to learn and develop. Let yourself fail and show it off and be proud of that because other people are failing too and mm-hmm. then you connect and then you have your little community of failures. It feels really nice. It feels nice yeah. to know that you're not alone in being a failure. Absolutely. <laughs> so the awful, awful alphabet. <clears throat> that happened. Yeah. Talk to us about working with your partner, Josh, to create yeah. your own terrible children's book. Yeah, it's funny. I... I did that market in Ottawa last weekend and so it was a whole new group of people that had never seen this book before right and the the running joke with every person when I told them I worked with my partner on this book and they were like did you stay together <laughs> I'm like yes we did and they're like it's meant to be <laughs> like oh my god you're, they're all that accent apparently but yeah it was so cute it working with someone that you're really really close with is really amazing and extremely hard because you're so close with them that you're comfortable enough to be as ruthless as humanly possible. (laughs) And to be honest, it was really helpful when I'm stuck, even now, on things outside of the book, when I'm really, really stuck on an illustration or a piece of design or whatever, and I can't get forward, I can't move past this block, I can always ask Josh because he's got this mind, this creative mind. He comes at things from a different angle, and in the moment when he gives me a piece of advice, I'm immediately like, okay, dum-dum, like, you don't know anything about art, and then I do that piece of advice, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot you're incredible, (laughs) 
and it always works out better. It's taking advice from him um, as a musician and a creator on in his own right, not necessarily visual arts. It's it's been a really huge blessing for me. Mm. I think. Yeah. yeah. No, it's really great. I I always love what seeing like two creative people, you know, matching mm. up. <laughs> yeah, even if it's like a creative person and someone who's a self-proclaimed I can only draw a stick man those people have this whole wealth of experience and ideas in them they just need to know the right questions to ask to pull it out so Yellow House is the brand that you create pieces under Mm -hmm. Um, so talk to us about the name and talk Mm. to us about your style well Yellow House comes I've well it's kind of been a long time coming I've been making art and selling it for a really long time and Um, I never really took it seriously. It was always just kind of a side gig, you know, the side Mm -hmm. hustle, whatever. And I've now really decided to pursue it. You're like, I should practice what I preach. Right? Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I should make myself a brand. Exactly. And my mom, she was always my biggest supporter, even when I was horrible. I'm going to just say this out loud. When I was really super young in grade school, I got caught shoplifting. And my mom came to pick me up from the office and she yelled at them for catching me and I'm like no I'm like they're right I stole the thing (laughs) you know and she's like if my daughter wants to steal your shitty products she can and I was like oh thanks mom (laughs) so she's clearly been my biggest supporter my whole life right and um this year and she got sick last year but this year in February she passed away and I that's when I really decided, okay, she supported me for a reason, and she believed in me, and I feel like I owe it to her and her memory to actually try instead of not taking it seriously. So I decided to go with it, um, get out there with my work, like I tell my students, and I decided to name my brand Yellow House because that's where we grew up. We grew up in a great big yellow house. It had yellow siding, and... It was kind of this happy place that, you know, my mom always taught us to take life not too seriously and you can laugh in the face of the worst possible situations. You just keep on going, keep doing you. So Yellow House is kind of an homage to how I grew up and how she raised me. Mm. Yeah. That's really nice. Thanks. And I'm not crying by the end of it, so I can finally talk about it. (laughs) So that's nice. (laughs) That is nice. (laughs) Yeah. She was a big inspiration for me, so... Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some of your favorite projects to work on? Oh, boy. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm really digging my own personal work, to be honest. I'm just enjoying making um, new pieces and sharing it and then meeting people through that. I mean, I do a lot of fan art, so a lot of I'm into a lot of nerdy stuff, I guess, or like whatever nerdy. Um, like Doctor Who and all that kind of thing. So meeting other people that are into it is awesome. I just made a friend <laughs> online who's as obsessed with Harry Potter as I am. And now I'm like, you are my people and we need to be best friends. I don't <laughs> care where you live. So that's that's a really big thing for me. Like Instagram and all that stuff is my way to like connect. Because I'm really busy. You know, mm-hmm. I got a kid. I got a job. I got another job. It's like stuff coming all over. Sometimes I just have a minute to connect with someone, and this is a good way to do it. Yeah. So that's probably my fave, and also um, custom projects, like custom illustration pieces, are so much fun. Love it. People ask for the weirdest stuff. Um, Someone asked me to do her and her husband as their game characters, which was super rad. Nice. Um, And I even mixed up the characters, because one of them was this, like, epic, intense, huge character, so I naturally just, in my mind, assumed that was the male character. But it was the female character, which was amazing. She's just this, like, beastie magic thing. Or not. I'm not sure. I don't play the game. <laughs> no. Who knows? But it was awesome. I know what they told me. It was, me. like, really challenging and fun. Nice. Like, super challenging. That's really fun. Mm-hmm. What was the game? Destiny? <clears throat> I'm going to say. Destiny 2, mm. maybe? Maybe. I hope I'm right. <clears throat> Megan, if I'm not right, let me know. Let us know <laughs> if you're wrong. <laughs> yes. So over the summer, you were doing a series on Insta called Draw Me Yellow House, mm-hmm. um, where you doing where you were creating characters of locals. So what was your inspiration to start this series, and uh, will we see, be seeing more posts? Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm thinking in January, I'm going to start up again. It probably won't be weekly. I'm probably going to move to a monthly format because it does take a bit of time. Um, 
but it was just a fun way for me to meet people and give back and, you know, try drawing new things outside of my style. Um, not even, I'm lying. It's totally just to draw more things in my style because artists are all obsessed with themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so just do more of what I like doing. <laughs> but it was really fun. So people would post to the hashtag draw me yellow house, um, any photo that they'd want me to draw. And I would just kind of pick one at random, whatever grabbed me that day and draw it up and do them an illustration and then mail them a copy. It That's fun. really fun. It's just super fun. And it's such a nice, I like bringing a little bit of sunshine into the day, right? Like, imagine someone drew you and sent you a picture. You'd be like, oh, man, that's sweet. That'd be pretty it's cool. super sweet. Yeah, I, I want to do something nice every Feel once free in a while. to use me for another one. <laughs> Hit that hashtag. I will. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is a little bit, of, this question yeah. is a little bit off topic. Mm-hmm. But there was an article that I read this summer on Sudbury.com written by Ella Myers, who is... Fabulous. She's great. She's yeah. a great lady. She's a great person. Um, where she uh, talked about a very special connection that you and your husband Josh share uh, from River and Sky. Yes. And it was such an adorable story that I need to hear it in person. I also think it was really adorable, but I'm totally biased. Um, Well, I had met Josh in the summer of... Oh, gosh. I don't even remember. Sorry, babe. Uh, It was in the summer. And that summer, he had invited me to go to River and Sky... And my sister was playing a festival in Manitoulin Island, so I didn't get to go. So I was obviously super disappointed because he's a babe and I was obsessed. Um, So the following summer, I ended up going with him. River and Sky is this magical thing that happens every year. It's wonderful. So we had the best weekend of all times. Another year happened. I went again with him. It was super fun. And I'm pretty sure it was this year, if I'm remembering correctly. But um, we had just had this this night it was so wonderful we were at the beach stage we've got you know the perfect weather starry sky everything you can imagine that's like a recipe for happy and it was just a really funny evening so you know drinks and and fun things are partaken (laughs) throughout the evening (laughs) i'll just leave it at that it's legal shut up and (laughs) we're walking back to the tent we're killing ourselves laughing it was so funny so we're in our tent and we're literally just hanging out, don't get weird, um, and laughing and just having a really funny time. And his brother and his friend are out there having a fire. We could hear them laughing, and hopefully we're like, please don't hear us laughing, whatever. Anyway, at one point, Josh it got quiet, and he's just, out of nowhere, said that he loved me. But I was a little under the influence, so I didn't know, or I wasn't sure that that's what he said. And I didn't want to just say it. You know, back. jump the gun. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd be like, I said I want some juice. And then I'd be like, oh, damn. Oh, no, I can't. So <laughs> I was just like, what? Out loud. He said that. And I said, what? <laughs> and then I laid back down and I said it very quietly. Just in case he said it. <laughs> very quietly. But he didn't hear it at all. So we just went to bed oh, wow. <laughs> after this like most perfect night and he just thinks that I was just like what and went to bed <laughs> so that was cool um the next day it was it was funny getting up and just being like what's happening <laughs> is, are we an is item that, now what's happening I'm not even sure we might have yeah. professed our love for each other I last night because up was... until this point you guys were friends yeah we were just just homies I had no idea he felt that way at all he was like my best friend I had no idea and that just I was obsessed by the way like over the time I was in love for years at this point you know and I was just playing it cool because I'm cool like that right yeah (laughs) he replaced Chester in your heart definitely (laughs) definitely replaced Chester and he's a much better singer rest in peace Chester anyways yeah, so the next morning, eventually, he was like, so, about what I said last night. And I was like, oh, my God, I love you. So I love you a lot. <laughs> and just, like, couldn't stop saying it. And then we, like, said it constantly. Ever and, since and then here the we best. are now. Yeah, now we're, a like, super later. married. And toddlered up. Oh, it's the man. best. It's what really a, fun. What a turn of events. Right? Man. Yes. I love it. I'm super happy. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. That, it was, that was just a great story. Yeah. So no matter what, if someone says I love you, just scream what 
and go to sleep. Wherever you are, that is yeah. my advice. Yeah. It's the recipe for a Middle healthier traffic. after. Just what? Go it. to sleep. <laughs> Done. You'll get married. I guarantee it. That's the Tracy Baker guarantee. All right. So let's oh wrap up God. the interview okay. here. We're going to do a few of our greater conversation questions. Okay. So first one here, Sudbury shout out. So this okay. is somebody, a Siberian, mm-hmm. that you feel like doesn't get enough credit that you'd like to give a shout out to. Oh, damn. It's really funny, but the first person that came to mind is my older sister. I don't know why. <laughs> Corey Baker, throw her some love, people. <laughs> the only person I can think of right now. She's a great sister. She's great. Both of my sisters, all three of them are great. I just thought of her. She's she's always doing me a solid. <laughs> she's always helping me out. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Sister support. I like sisters. it. Sisters. All right. Doing it. Corey, you're the best. Yeah. Go team Corey. You're the un- underrated baker. All right. So, like we said earlier, um, you've got you've got a little toddler at home. Um, so what's some of your favorite family activities in the city to take part in? Um, it depends on the day, but we got a Science North Pass, and it's straight up, that thing's paid for itself, times 6,000. It's so fun, because he yeah. just goes insane. He goes hard. We get in there, and it's party time. Yeah. He goes hard. It's the best. It is a fun time. If you haven't been to the Science Center as an adult lately, do it. It's please. actually really fun. I know. Yeah. And there's still a guy from my high school had his photo taken and they used him to do like the body sounds and without fail I go there and I press the fart button and die laughing every time because it's a guy I know. Maturity. Yeah. It's great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Science Center and then our, me and him our other favorite thing to do is chase seagulls at Bell Park. <laughs> Maturity. Super fun. You know. Yeah. I'm an adult. Yeah. So, where would you say is the best view in the city? It's a really tough pick. Like, within the city, I don't want to cop out and say Bell Park, but Bell Park's pretty ballin'. Um, yeah, I'll just cop it out and say Bell Park. My other favorite view is, is just past Lively in at our old camp in Whitefish. The mm-hmm. sunsets were insane. It was wonderful. Oh, so. man. Whitefish. Whitefish. Under- under, underrated. Yeah. The most underrated part of Sudbury is Whitefish. <laughs> the most underrated part yes. of Greater Sudbury. So, yes, Greater Sudbury. Oh, the Laurentian Trails. Nah, I never go there anymore. No. I'm a big fan. There's a good spot um, up the plaza, in the Millennium Plaza, where Boston Pizza is. If you keep going down to the very end past mm-hmm. the big and tall store, you're looking down like all of Kingsway. Oh, that's not bad. It's decent. I'm going to have to check that out. It's decent. There's actually a spot behind Waterview that's really nice, too. Oh. I actually, I used to go there with my old best friend, um, and we'd go park back up there and just laugh our butts off and chat and stuff and, like, drink coffee. Um, but it's up at the very back of Waterview Apartments, except now a huge tree grew there. Rude. So you can't see it anymore. God, it's garbage. All right, Tracy. Well, thanks for taking some time with us. Thank we'll you. see you at the Maker's Market. That's coming yeah. up in November 24th, 25th at the McEwen School of Architecture downtown. Um, we'll catch you there for all your Christmas shopping needs. Yeah, bring your friends. Hey, welcome back to CKLU 96.7. We are here this hour. Uh, we've been talking with Tracy Baker from Makers Norris. She was really kind to sit down with us at a very busy time for them. They have their Makers North holiday market that is coming up. Um, that is coming up on the 24th and the 25th at the McEwen School of Architecture. Um, so we definitely hope we'll see you there. Um, in the meantime, though, check out our creator.com. So here's a few new things that are on our front page right now so we updated with a new maker monday special so we this time we we're featuring wolf and pine so we got to know all about them and all their different products and um where they come up with some of these cheeky names of theirs uh we also have a write-up for the play mine series that sudbury theater that uh, sudbury theater center and pat the dog have been working on um, they had their first presentation last week on the 8th uh, with a reading of Manifesto by J- Jesse Brady. They have two more coming up throughout the season, um, so keep your eyes peeled for that as well. Um, of course, we've been back to our round.
roundups of events as well. So if you're not sure what to do on a weekend ever, um, definitely make sure that you are signed up for our email list. So you'll get an email straight to your inbox. Everything that's going on in the city that weekend. And you can also check out our calendar straight on our site anytime as well if you're stuck for something to do. Remember as well, if you've been listening in this hour, uh, we also have all of our ep- previous episodes of Creator Conversations uploaded on our site, so you can fi- uh, find those as well. Um, check out some of our past guests. Um, we have more that are going to be coming up very shortly as well. We're a little behind, but such is life. Um, so let's get into our last chunk of music here. Um, so we're going to throw it way back way, way back here um, to a few of Tracy's favorite high school jams. So first of all, we're going to go Numb by Linkin Park and then Drive by Incubus, and we'll be back. Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. Hey, welcome back to CKLU 96.7. This hour, we have been talking with Tracy Baker. She is one of the founders, along with Julianne Steedman, for Makers North. Um, She was super generous of their time, especially this busy, busy, busy time of year, uh, to sit with us and talk a little bit about Makers North and some of the things that they're working on. Um, So we're really excited to check out the holiday market coming up on the 24th, 25th at the McEwen School of Architecture. Um, You get all your holiday shopping done, check out all sorts of really cool artists and crafts and that type of thing as well. Um, So we're really excited and hopefully you are as well. Um, We've got coming up next week, we're going to be talking with Kelly Perez. Uh, She is from the STC and she is working on a really exciting cabaret series, Voices of the Rock. So we're going to be talking with her uh, leading up to next week, leading up to her first presentation with John Newlands. Um, So tune in next week on Tuesday, 5 o'clock here on CKLU 96.7. We're going to sign off here for the night and uh, Steve will be here shortly.